everybody. My name is Dio Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from Top 16 of Tatooine. Are you ready? Because I know I am. We got Lukash versus James, the Republic versus the Rebellion. You know, yesterday I was so tired I could not say the word Rebellion. I started on it several times, but this morning I'm a little more awake. So let's go for Awake Dion. Um, today I'm joined by uh, Jonah on stats and stuff. What's up, everybody? Top Cut Tatooine. Woo woo. Let's I'm go. Excited. Not going to lie, Jonah. I almost said Jonas. I had that stuck in my brain. <laughs> I, I was so close. That's why there was a little delay before your name. Somebody in the chat had wrote Jonah as Jonas. Almost got me. Almost, but not quite. Uh, so we're about to open up that Choose Your Champion, and between Jonah and myself, we'll go ahead and start breaking down these lists. You might be wondering, where's Will? You know what? My sleepy bearded man, he's somewhere out in the universe. I believe that he will show up at some point. And if not, that's all right. We'll figure it out. So uh, let's go ahead and start breaking down the uh, the matchup. But before we do that, let's remind you guys that today's episode brought to you by Gold Squadron Paint Wars. If you haven't watched our competitive painting show, what are you doing? Go watch it. We're actually going to be potentially giving away one of those ships today if we hit our sub goal. And we're not all that far away. So we, we're on the climb. Let's go ahead. We're going to open up that Choose Your Champion. If you're watching, on, watching later on on YouTube, put it in the comments down below. If you're watching on Twitch, those are your instructions right there in the bottom of the screen all right i'll take the first list here on your left side your bet one all we have lukash he brought the galactic republic we have warthog uh with clone commander cody now if you're not familiar with warthog warthog is the uh the lat that allows you to uh basically keep a ship that a friendly ship that is destroyed at range zero to two during the engagement phase alive as long as it is a non-limited ship so as long as it's generic that's usually in the community we call it generic um so we have those jedi knights if they die during the engagement phase uh they actually get to stick around until the end of the engagement phase rather than being uh initiative killed potentially then we also have two Jedi Knights. Those are the Initiative 3 um, Jedi Knights there. They have the 7B title, giving them a third attack die. They have a lot of punch and, of course, a force point. Expect them to be nice and maneuverable. And, of course, uh, leaning on that force to get them that double reposition as needed. Watch out. Those, those 7B Jedi, better than you might think. And last but not least, we also have a Squad 7 veteran. You can see the continuation of the theme, Initiative 3. We'll talk about why that's good here in a minute. But uh, Initiative 3, Arc 170, three attack dice out the back, uh, sorry, in the front, two out the back, uh, one agility, nine health overall. The theme between these three, there's good tech. We know that Arc 170s are nice and chunky. We have the maneuverable Jedi Knights and Warthog to help keep them alive to the end of the engagement phase, and they're all Initiative 3. What does that get you? Well, that gets you the opportunity for... Um, movement during the activation phase in any order that you might want and uh, that flexibility can make an absolute massive difference uh, in a game where you know you might need to do a tactical bump you've discovered that maybe a maneuver was a little bit farther or a little bit shorter than you thought when one of your first one moves um, it is uh, you know it just gives you a lot of flexibility I know a lot of players prefer to keep their squads within the same initiative for this flexibility all right Jonah what did James bring today all right on the other side with James uh, we have Dash Rendar. Um, we don't see Dash too often, so it is uh, pretty cool to see him in the top cut. Um, Dash reads, uh, while you move, you ignore obstacles, uh, which is pretty cool. It really does open up the, the board for him. Um, and paired with that, he has Trick Shot, uh, kind of in, in synergy with his ability, allowing him to uh, shoot through obstacles um, with a little more firepower. We have Biston and Perceptive Co-Pilot. Uh, Biston reads, after you perform a primary attack, if you are focused, you may perform a bonus arc attack against a ship you have not already attacked this round. Um, so that Perceptive Co-Pilot, giving him the extra focus, 
paired with Fiston's uh, second attack, it's uh, pretty good. And then uh, remember, Dash also has the illicit slot where James has put false transponder codes. Um, and then we have Jan Ors um, paired with Jin Urso and the Moldy Crow title. Um, Jin Urso is going to allow Dash and um, and Jan and uh, to really like have a lot of flexibility on whether you take a focus or evade, especially for Dash who gets uh, two, right? So he'll get two focus tokens. He could choose to take focus evade or two evades if he really wanted to. And then we have AP5, which uh, is just an excellent coordinator. Um, got that white coordinate, got some backup maneuvers. Uh, it's a ship with a lot of great utility. So all around a pretty solid rebel squad. All right. All, right. All right, everybody. So looking at the current Choose Your Champion, looks like we're at about 50-50, and we're about to have our first engagement. Is the dice box on? It is. I did it. One for one. Let's go. We're going to start here with a five-dice attack. This is Janor's pumping up that dash Rendar, and we got two hits, two focuses, and a blank. Spend the focus. And we are starting off with four hits going against that Red Jedi Knight. Here is the roll. We got Trail Mix, one of each. Spend the focus for two, and that's going to be two shields off that Jedi Knight. Not a great start for the Republic. We'll see if they can get some damage back on the dash to get started. Get the betting. Quick. Uh, ha -ha, just closed it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, Chad. You, try, you tried so hard. You tried. Uh -huh. All right, and here we go. Jedi Knight looking to get some revenge. This is going to be an unmodified shot. Three on three because of the range bonus. Here we go. One of the dice didn't roll. Uh, we need... Oh, uh, the third. Yeah, the third dice didn't roll. The, that focus. And here we go. And all right, same result, two hits. All right, and there we go. One damage, first shield down on dash. Now, one of the cards that we do have on dash that we didn't get to see in play, like you had mentioned, is that Biston uh, gunner card. That's the reason what the whole reason why we got that perceptive co-pilot out there guys is getting that double attack But of course it has to be against different ships. So because we only had that red Jedi Knight in range you can only get one attack Now that that's actually a, uh, an interesting interesting thought um, You know normally you want to get all your ships on a, on a target <laughs> you can um uh, but I guess now you you would you wouldn't want to only take dash on one on one. Most ships lose that. <laughs> Though you know having having more ships in there means they're going to be getting shot. But uh, at least you're getting shots as well. Mm. So good morning good to point. everybody, by the way, who's uh, who's joined us today. Looks like we had uh, we have a hundred and hundred and thirty seven thousand. Uh, vote uh, points, excuse me, uh, in the pot right now. Split exactly fifty fifty. All right, because exactly 50-50. And thank you so much for the sub getting us started. What were you going to say there, Jonah? Sorry about that. Uh, oh, I was just saying that's a great point um, that, that you had earlier. But, uh, yeah, that's all. Did something come through on my end with audio? Uh, no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. I, oh. thought, I, I think I had missed what you had said. Uh, Romer DS in the chat says, 50-50 because it's good to be fair in the morning. <laughs> That's right. Start started off nice and uh, nice and easy, right? So you know what? We have no idea what's happening. Now, for there, anybody just tuning in, these are the top 16 players in our tournament. Uh, we do have a tournament bracket that we're going to be showing you guys as we progress uh, today, and we will see who ends up crowned the winner of the Galactic Championship Qualifier, uh, Tatooine Edition, and uh, it should be fun. We've had uh, what is it? This is qualifier number six so we've had five other qualifiers already that uh, have crowned champions of different planets and of course remember the top 32 in each of these qualifiers are getting invites to the galactic championship the finale 
for all this. So should be a good time. And here we go. The Republic is on the move. So we have the Jedi Knight banking two to the left. Trying to set up and guess where Dash is going to go. Now remember, Dash can ignore obstacles while moving, but must respect them while shooting. So specifically, let's talk about that rock right there. So Dash cannot end on top of that asteroid and have shot. So uh, if Dash were to say do a hard two, a hard turn to the to its left, it would be forced to barrel roll in order for it to actually have a shot. Now I, I'm gonna expect Lukash to get really in tight with Dash be able to crowd that range one and and make that sensor blind spot go off reducing the number of dice that dash can roll though with Jan Ors there that's still going to be potentially up to four dice and this Jedi Knight is bumping in the back there luckily it's out of range preventing it from uh, losing any modifications and we see the three bank sorry the three straight and probably gonna barrel roll i mean it depends right now it seems to be in range probably of two ships and i think that's what we're we're getting a, a little bit of hesitation on here guessing whether or not that lat is in range and we confirm that it sure is in range now because you got ap5 there as well um you know that does give you some opportunities for um uh, you know for movement next turn by seeing what you have in range right now right because AP5 has the capability of coordinating so watch out for that in the beginning of the activation phase next turn we're gonna get a target lock set up on the squad 7 veteran setting up some trick shot shenanigans and there's Jan flying one straight right now sitting in the pocket of dash takes a focus and has that arc to the side so expect it to attack the same ship and i will say the arc 170 is the most susceptible to attacks from dash as it only has a single agility we Jan also saw taking a lock here yeah look looking at where she wants to shoot also let's note that the false transponder codes did end up going off on squad seven veteran stripping the focus so even taking away that possibility of dodging the uh you know with with any of those focus results and additionally taking away the offensive capability using focus and here we go dash setting up the first shot remember dash has two focus tokens from the a recon, not the recon specialist, the perceptive co-pilot. Wow, first edition brain, go away. You're dead. Uh, <laughs> Jan setting up the big shot right here. And this is going to be a six dice attack going through the rock. Big money and spend that focus wow. and make it a full string. Maximum power. Five hits, one crit. Let's go. Two agility. What can you do? Arc 170. Absolutely nothing. Let's bring that, is... that down to three hole to get started, Jonah. Brutal. Wow. All right. Let's see what the crit is. We got a fuel leak. I mean, <laughs> that sounds about right after taking six damage. <laughs> and we have people saying, oh, my God, the humanity. Why? Why? Well, yeah, that, it can happen. And you, you just witnessed it. Here we go. Dash with the uh, second attack, by the way. Three hits and a crit. This is coming in from Biston. And another double focus roll. Now, this Jedi does have a focus. Going to spend it to only take two. Uh, and that 7B title coming into play. That crit, by the way, another fuel leak out there for the Republic. This, is, this isn't looking good. This is looking a little ugly right now. I'm not sure I've ever seen six damage dealt to one ship after one attack that's uh that's pretty crazy all righty <laughs> from madam juke here of the fearless gundarks everything is bigger and deadlier in australia even dash rendar so there is the crit we'll see what the roll is and one squiggle gonna go ahead and dodge that shot Coming in from um, come fr from Janors. Yeah, Even so though, uh, Dash was able to take away uh, the Jedi and the Arcs 
um, like modifiers, keep in mind because that lat is in range, uh, fire convergence is uh, is active. Um, I'll throw that up for anybody who wants to read, but essentially they have rerolls, so mm -hmm. that uh, that still could be pretty deadly. That's right. Let's let's see if that squad seven veteran can get anything going. We're gonna go ahead and reroll in that box. So warthog getting it started. Nothing there. Here's the arc. This is going to be three on three. It is obstructed. And got a hit there. Can do a fire convergence. Try to get that third hit. You really need to be getting full damage here. There we go. Three hits. Nice. Squad 7 Veteran hoping to do some damage here to Dash. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, it is obstructed, so it'll be four dice. Two plus range. It should be four, shouldn't it? Uh, it's range two. Ah, just barely range two. There we go. So two squiggles. That's going to be another damage, but that's only the second shield so far. Range two shot now. Unobstructed coming in from the Jedi Knight. You got to get your pound of flesh right here. And two hits only. Fire Convergence. Don't forget it. Get that third one. You got the Focus modifier in the Force, but not going to come up. Only two hits. Dash has two Evade dice. Going to be taking one more. So that initial engage only got three shields off the bat. Now, let's go ahead and analyze the positioning going into our next round of planning. One of the issues that we do see here is Dash is going to have to make a choice of direction. All right, it's going to have to either continue into the corner or go to the right. Um, I'm I'm suspecting it to go to the left, but that that seems that seems a problem. Going to the left may, means that you have shots, though. AP five is there and available to coordinate the rotate, which does make dash a little bit more unexpected. So you you have options going to the left and to the right. Which way would you prefer to go? I personally would prefer to go left. Um, it will make Dash vulnerable to some shots, but considering how far up James is in the damage race, I say try to end that uh, that Jedi or that arc before it gets to shoot. Um, and so I would just put all guns on target here and be aggressive. What about uh, you, Dion? I'm sorry. Say, say that one more time. I was reading. <laughs> so, uh, I, I personally, uh, based on where James uh, is is in the damage race, uh, being so far ahead, I would go left and just be as aggressive as possible and try to take out either the Jedi or the Ark uh, before uh, they get to shoot. So I'm, I would go left, personally. Yeah, I mean, you do have the possibility of, um, I'm, I'm going to say initiative kill, but you can't, at, with Warthog nearby, you actually can't initiative kill them, so they will get shots. Oh, right. Yeah, right. so but but at the same time you can still get them to zero and then re them removed at the end of the game uh, or at the end of that turn and you're left then with only a single Jedi and Warthog uh, which mm -hmm. Dash is still out there. Now, one thing a, a little little history lesson for anybody who's maybe newer to second edition. Um early on, early on I remember this was the in the time of uh, the it was Pax Unplugged, twenty nineteen or twenty eight. It might have been twenty eighteen, where Octacon brought. It was the first coming of Dash in Second Edition. It had some absolutely ridiculous, um, ridiculous firepower. It still used Janors. It still used Janors, uh, but it used Han Gunner. And it, it, it caused a whole change. I had to publish a, uh, a quick tips video about how it interacted. And then uh, FFG at, at the time came in and, and changed the rules because they realized, oh, my goodness, what have we done? Uh, <laughs> and it, it was it was all over the place. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Rourke. It was Rourke? Are you sure it was Rourke? It wasn't Jan pumping up the dice? Or was it a modification thing? Uh... So, something okay maybe maybe i'm remembering history incorrectly but uh oh yes double tap at initiative seven that's what it was 
Um, yeah, it was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was Rourke. Initiative 7. So imagine Dash b b shooting before everybody else and, and shooting you twice and go like, you're dead, you're dead, next, you're dead, you're dead, next. <laughs> Could you attack the same target? Could you attack the same target? Uh, my brain says maybe. Let me let me go let me go back and uh, and look up my video really quickly because <laughs> I I don't I don't even remember. Um, While Dion looks that up, uh, one possibility here, um, an option that Lucas has is to throw that red Jedi Knight uh, for a block uh, for Dash so he doesn't get that action. And so it might be smart to coordinate um, a focus with AP5 so Dash uh, will have his double tap uh, with the two shots. But we'll have to see what Lucas does. It looks like the players are about ready to begin uh, activation. All right. I, fo I, found, I found the video here. Uh, he here was – I'll go ahead and give you guys a quick – quick peek of what it was now the interaction no longer works so the video is on private you guys can't oh uh, wrong one you guys can't see it anymore oh we got some weird overlay things right there let's go ahead oh it looks weird because of the the dice box but we had uh it was squat squad leader how well, can i get this to not look like garbage all right that looks better so we had squad leader uh squad leader the uh, tactical officer and moldy crow on Rourke, and then it was Dash with trick shot Han Gunner, the Outrider title, and then the uh, Perceptic co pilot. Uh, it was it was absolutely absolutely crazy, and uh, Han Gunner at the time just made it, it was it was it was silly, absolutely silly. And, and there was an official rules post about it saying, like, yes, it can do it. And then they ended up changing it. So it was it was silly. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, that, that's a blast from the past. But Dash, Dash has always been on the edge of being like, this can be a really dangerous ship. So uh, as, usually what ends up happening in, historically is as it becomes more powerful, it ends up getting smacked down pretty quickly. We'll see what ends up. <laughs> we'll see what ends up happening mm -hmm. in the points in the future. But you always got to keep an eye out for Dash. I mean, it's a four dice turreted ship that has great support pieces. All right, here we go. So we did end up getting Dash going to the left. Daddy Dash in the corner. What I really like about this is that, um, like Jan. Hopefully she did like a one forward or a slow move. Um, if Dash has a good attack, like there, there's a huge possibility that w between Dash and Jan, uh, they can take out like uh, the Jedi and the Ark this turn, uh, which would be absolutely huge with uh, 50 minutes left on the clock still. 100%. Here we go. We got a uh, uh, evade token there. On Janors coming in using that Jin Urso crew, made popular by the Heratani lists. All right, and the Jedi Knight being threatened at range one. We got to watch out because uh, Janors got a gun too, and not a great roll to get started. Three focuses, but gonna go ahead, stay aggressive, target lock, blank to blank, spend the focus, three hits. We're going to get two evade dice. You need paint here. Two damage going through. That's going to be it for the Jedi Knight. But remember, we have Warthog in range. I'm pretty sure we'll get that range two check, which means that that Jedi Knight will stay alive and get one more big shot into Dash Rendar at range one. Mm-hmm. Next. Warhog is just so powerful. It, it's a great it, ability. It is. 100%. A quick TTS, quick tip. Did you know if you click, if you right-click the range bubble, it will tell you range to friendly ships as well as enemy ships. All righty. And here's Dash. 
Bisten is definitely active. Can potentially shoot two ships. First one. Five dice attack going into... Uh, I'm not, I actually missed the ping. Did you catch that one, Jonah? Um, I didn't, but... Uh... Let me see. It's probably not the Jedi because of the donut. Yeah, it's, it's um, going to so end guessing... up being the arc, the arc or the lat for sure. And that tells me that it was the lat at range three. Spends the focus. Two damage going into Warthog. How would that be five dice? Because it's not obstructed. And oh, Jan's the Janors the front. Too. Yep. Janor's yeah. ability that Moldy Crow giving her that front arc. And here is the second attack, attack coming into the arc one seventy. Only two hits on this one. Dash getting a little sloppy. Does roll the focus result. Is he willing to spend the focus on defense? Looking at the amount of health he has. Got a fuel leak right now. I think in this situation, you take the damage. I agree. Because ne next round, you should be able to get one more shot. Because that Dash can absolutely wreck you next turn. Take mm -hmm. the damage. Have the focus for your attack. We'll see what... Lukash decides to do here. It's a big decision. Gonna take it. Here we go. Nice. So still alive. One, two, three, four, five. Still has one hole left. Let's, Let's begin. Hope that pays off for him. Yeah, same. We have one fire convergence charge, uh, by the way, when the Ark and Jedi Knight get to shoot. Here's the first shot from Warthog. One hit. Dash does have one focus token left. We'll see if it comes into play here. Now roll the one squiggle. Two more attacks coming in. Oh, but there is a strain there from Commander Cody after you perform an attack that is missed. Uh, if one or more hits were neutralized, the defender gains one strain token. So that's going to matter here on this four die shot coming in from this Jedi Knight. Four on one. One hit, two crits. No focus results to modify with the focus. But you got fire convergence. There's the focus. That's a full string. Two hits, two crits. Wow. It's going to be only one, one agility. There it is. And still ended up getting the evade. One hit and two crits. Now, these crits are hitting the hole, Jonah. That's the first mm -hmm. shield there. First crit is a stunned pilot. Second one is a wounded pilot. Let's go ahead and get this on the screen for you guys. Stunned pilot says that that uh, obstacles are bad. And guess what? Um, the, the dash... Dash, uh, dash ability uh, becomes a, a problem now. You got stunned pilot out there, and additionally picked up the wounded pilot, which is going to end up affecting actions. Forced to roll a die on hits or crits takes a stress. Stunned and wounded. Dash isn't feeling too good. Mm -mm. Three hits coming in from this yellow Jedi Knight. This is going into Janors. It's unobstructed, and Jan has an evade token out there, so we'll be taking only a single damage. But this is uh, this starting to, starting to swing a little bit. Here we go. Arc 170, only a single crit. That is sad. Dash still has a focus on defense. And evaded. So that was a big swing. We got four health only left on Dash Rendar. And this is the risks you take with Dash. You know, it is it is a one ship list that you you know it's it's the one that needs to get you to the end game. And ideally you want Dash again uh, alive at the end. But uh we have three out of the four ships on James on uh, excuse me on Lukash's side alive. There's a chance here, though I will say with the one of the Jedi Knights down, um, and the Arc 170 living on a single hole. There is a chance that we get kind of a strange end game where it's like Jan Ors versus maybe a Jedi Knight in the end game. Mm -hmm. It's important uh, not to overlook AP5. Like AP5 can really make Jan um, 
like as versatile as possible. Uh, even right now, uh, Jan is stressed by AP5's ability. Um, I'll throw it up on the screen. Um, a still allows Jan to uh, to take an action through coordinate. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, it's let's see, what's the score right now? Score right um, now, 55-71. Yep. Yeah. So at this point, it's still anyone's game. Absolutely. Now we now to uh, answer a couple of questions that were that came up in the chat while we were doing this. Uh, somebody asked if I wanted to participate in another Galaxies event because I played in this one. Do I have to pay for the shipping again? No, you do not. Only the events. So that's why all the prizes end up shipping together at the conclusion of the event. That's how I'm able to charge only one time for shipping. So you once you've done your, your shipping one time, all you have to do is add on qualifiers as you go. So each, uh, each qualifier that you make, you go ahead, or that you want to play in, you go ahead and get that ticket. But the shipping, only one time. And, uh, and it is that simple. Also, for those of you who have earned your invite to the Galactic Championship, we're going to be putting up the listing pretty soon for the Battle for Alderaan uh, for those tickets. Because, again, it is an invite that has been won, uh, not an entry into the into the event. We, uh, we, but we made a bunch of special prizes just for that Galactic Championship. So we've got to get those, get those tickets up for sale. Uh, and we will be sending a, uh, a code. The way it's going to be listed on the website... Uh, it's gonna it's gonna look super expensive, <laughs> but we get we're gonna give everybody a code who got an invite so that they can um, you know get it down to the normal price, which is fifteen dollars. So uh, that that's how that works and how we can actually utilize the website still. Uh, but make sure that people don't uh, that don't have the <laughs> that don't have the invite um, don't get in. Or I guess Jonah they could pay like two grand to get into the tournament. I guess, but I don't <laughs> think it's worth it. <laughs> no, honestly. Uh, that's dedication right there. Uh, if you really want to play, uh, two thousand dollars, you know. Oh my gosh, the prize support's good, but I don't know if it's two thousand dollars good. That's yeah. uh, you know, that's an entire X-wing collection right there. Uh, All right, well we have we have some ships on the move here. AP five looking for coordinate options right now. All right, here we go. Squad 7 veteran coming in. We did see a coordinate for the double focus over there on Dash, even though Dash was stressed. Remember, AP5's ability says that he can coordinate people even while stressed. Warthog also making the turn. You can see that he didn't take the risk of banking Warthog into the corner. Uh, that would have been a little bit of an issue trying to get out, though, if Dash... Uh, goes m goes short. He might not be able to get arc. It's going to be a little bit tough, but he's trying to cover. There we go with the Jedi Knight at the 45 degree angle. Like you were talking about earlier, this is the strength of having them all at initiative three. He moved that arc out of the way. Warhawk filled the spot. And Jan Ors does not bump here. That is by a pixel, friends. Wow. Absolutely crazy. I don't, I don't think that James expected to have it, have an action on Jan. That's why we have a little bit of a hesitation. Like, uh, I guess I'll do an action. We're probably going to see a jam here. The Hawk does have jam Ooh. available to it. It's always exciting to see it. Oh. Wait, maybe not a jam. Oh, no. We're going to take a target lock. Stay aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Hard three from Dash. Sitting in all the arcs. I'm a little bit surprised we didn't get the jam, to be completely honest. It's, uh, I'll say it's pr a pretty aggressive move, especially given the fact that Dash has only four health left. Well, it um, seems you know what though. The, the, here, here's the plan. Uh, it's it's kill Warthog. <laughs> you can see Dash got a target lock on Warthog. Janors has a target lock on Warthog. It is a full send into that lat. Mm -hmm. Dash was not able to take his regular action because he is stressed. 
and Luckily, here he still has that uh those focuses from AP5. Mm-hmm. And here we go. The first shot for Dash gonna be range two into Warthog. Expect the AP5. Oh, sorry. No, there won't be a pump up because he's currently stressed. But got the full string anyway. Three hits and a crit. Warthog, are you willing to spend that focus? You currently have eight health left. Will you spend it? I say spend it here. Oh, you're getting that crit spend it either. Here. Do your shot, miss with Cody, and just like set up that arc shot with the fire convergence to just make Dash pay. All right, here we go. I like the move. Two hits and a crit ends up with a direct hit. Takes four cards anyway, down to four. Jan Ors might be able to finish him off. But first, we have Dash Rendar with the bonus attack provided by Biston, still currently focused. Here's a second shot. And we got three hits. No sensor blind spot here. Was just barely in range two. And comes up empty. No squiggles there. Has the option to spend the focus. But that is feels bad. Because you want that for offense. You need to take Dash off the board. Are you willing to take your shields for a focused shot? A focus is not a guarantee. We'll see what we end up getting. He's going to spend it, being a little bit conservative. Knows that the Jedi Knight is a good endgame piece versus AP5. Jan Orr is now trying to take out Warthog. Range 1 with that front attack giving you, uh, given to you by the Moldy Crow. Four dice, range one, and there's the full string. You need, oh you need to evade. No, AP five. Uh, sorry, not AP five. The warthog going down. Two hits, two crits. Wounded pilot. Disabled power regulator. In this situation, there's that. This is not gonna do anything, but. Uh, oof, feels bad. That's rough. That's really rough. You need, you, you gotta take out Dash right here. This is your chance. Warthog's ability does work on itself. First shot, seeing if you could set up the Cody shenanigans, like you had mentioned there, Jonah. Possible strain. Here we go. There's a hit. And double squiggles. Here we go. We just set up that Cody. Apply the strain and see if the Arc 170 or the Jedi Knight can take advantage. Going to shoot with the range one Arc 170. Has a focus. Remember, that Arc has a single hole left. It's angry. Four dice. It's looking big. for paint. Spend the focus. Are you going to... Wait, you got Warthog. See if you can get the full string. This is your opportunity. Go big. Got to hit. Spend the focus. Three hits and a crit. Single evade die. Got the squiggle. This dash, very evadey, but still taking two hits and a crit. That is uh, a huge win for Lucas right now. Direct hit. Oh. Direct hit. One, two, three, four, five. That brings dash down to two hole. Now we have the dead. Jedi Knight. He's got one more yeah, shot. Dash is dead. Is Dash gone? He's gone. Oh yeah, he only had sorry, you're right, six hole. I don't know why yeah. I had eight on the brain. I was thinking about the uh was thinking about the um uh the, the lat. No, I was thinking about the lat. Oh. But uh okay. Well that means the Jedi Knight doesn't have a shot. Some some folks in the chat saying that maybe he should have shot with a Jedi Knight first, possibly taken out Dash, and then had a back shot available. But here we go. AP5, Hero of the Rebellion, single hit going into the Arc 170. You need a squiggle to stay alive. You got it. Arc 170 lives to fight another day. I definitely see that argument. Um, 
for the potential tail shot. Um, I think Lucas really wanted to take out Dash, and he went with the arc first because it's that four dice shot. It had the focus, which mm-hmm. the Jedi Knight did not, mm-hmm. and uh, I don't think he wanted to be tempted to spend that fire convergence uh, with his Jedi Knight. Um, and also, that sh- that first shot is very important because Dash was strained. So uh, I don't think there was a right or wrong call there. I think Lucas just wanted to give himself the best chance possible to take out Dash, and it paid off. There we go. 100% agree. All right, so we got 34 minutes in change. There has been lots of violence on this Sunday morning. 109 to 129. James is still in the lead. We got a one hole arc 170 and a four health Jedi Knight versus Jan Ors, who's only lost a single shield and a full AP5. This is this is going to be an interesting end game, friends. Dion, what are you doing with Jan here, if you were James? Oh, well, that that's your big gun now. That's your big gun. You have AP5 out there to support. Uh, you need to take out the ARC-170. That's step one. Step 1A. <laughs> take out the ARC-170. Um, but you might be able to do that with AP5. Just kind of one big... Pinking, maybe before the one. Does the one forward fit back there? I it, think it does. Yeah. If it if it does, I prop I might go one forward, um, with AP five and hope that you can you know, take a calculate, see what you can get there. Jan, Jan, right now. I mean, she moves at initiative five. She has the option to uh, to rotate after both these ships move. I might expect a block attempt from the Jedi Knight. Like uh, mm-hmm. if you do a hard one right and then barrel roll to the right. Uh, so I might end up going something like a two bank to to the left with Jan and utilizing that uh, that mobile arc. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so coordinating Jan and target lock. Jan's going on the Jedi. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And there we go. AP5 is going to have a shot. It's through the cloud. It's going to have a shot. Let's see. What the, and th- there's the one hard. This is what I was thinking the Jedi Knight might do. We'll see if James anticipated that. Now, if he thinks that Janors is ba- one banking to the right, it stays right there. But no, we are going to get a fine tune controls barrel roll covering the b- bank to the left. I do think the two bank might hop over though. There's a focus for the action. Oh, and he gets to the right, and I think that side arc is already on. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a range one shot. I will say now that that Jedi Knight is on the backside of Jan, um, it's going to be really difficult for Jan to kind of make that relevant, um, that lock relevant. Um, unless she uses it this turn. Oh, she can always rotate, though. She can always rotate. She's going to take a evade from that uh, the, the back gun of the ARC-170. And che- checking both ARCs, seeing where do you want to go. All right, so has decided to take out what, what is deemed as the easy target, one agility, three on one. Trail mix, spend for two, that is a guaranteed death. It's always great to take out a ship, um, but I would have gone into the Jedi. Um, the Jedi is going to be harder to pin down, especially with uh, Jan kind of um, you know, out of position now, and AP5 still had the potential to end the arc anyway. Um, so I think... That play by James gave Lucas a chance to uh, to get a you know some some end game Jedi play um, going here. All righty, let's see what we get. Four dice into range one. Spend the focus for four. You could take AP five out with a bad roll. That is a lie. It has five health. <laughs> here we go. Two agility, and you're gonna take three damage there on AP five. You got half points. 
So trading some points here. Lukash still in the game, 125 to 151. James has got to keep Janors alive. That is the end game piece for him. That Jedi, I expect it to hunt down AP5 this upcoming mm -hmm. turn. And then you have a Jedi Knight versus Janors uh, battle to the death because there's a ton of time left on this clock. Yeah, that's going to be really difficult uh, to for uh for james to he's gonna have to run with ap5 uh jan is out of position and unless she rotates she's not gonna have shots for a little while and uh, ap5 is squirrely um that jedi knight is in pretty close and ap5 could do a backup he could go fast straight through the cloud um you know like it's uh ap5 is in a good position um to make Lukas go through some mental gymnastics right now about what he might do. Because mm -hmm. AP5 has the reverse too. You got to watch out for that. Mm -hmm. Beep, beep, beep. Back it up. Beep, beep, beep. Now, does the 5K fit over even with the reverse? I don't, I don't know. That's close. I don't. Chat, what I do don't you guys think? think? So. Ooh, I think the five would. All right. Well, we did we did get the one reverse, and looking at it now, that five K does look good. Only went with the four K. Oh, yeah. I think that's that's a mistake there by by Lukash. May have forgotten about the reverse. Only went four. I really think the five would have fit. That Jedi has to bug out uh, to the right next turn. Jan is coming around the mountain, and uh, you you got you have a lot of time on the clock. You got to use it. Now Jan rotating. This is a free shot, uncontested. Two on two. Lukash has got to hope not to take damage here. One hit. There's a lock out there. Not sure if Jan was willing to use it. Not yet. Got the double of AIDS. All right. We're going to give you a hashtag blessed little Jedi Knight. You have a chance. Hashtag the forces with the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Jedi Knight's options for clearing stress. Let's go ahead and throw that dial up on the on the screen here, Jonah. For Jan. Uh, uh, for uh, for the for the oh, Jedi. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. So let's talk about pursuit angles. Pursuit angles. You ended up you you failed the four K, and now you have one banks, two banks, two forward or three forward as an option to change. Uh, excuse me, to clear the stress. You have twenty six minutes left on the clock. There. Hmm. I almost I almost think that engaging here might be might be incorrect maybe a disengage mm -hmm. might be the right way to go pick scoop up a target lock you know do do a two bank to the right fine tune boost lock ap5 and then bring it around i think that might be the play there it is there's a two, the bank. two bank yeah yeah barrel roll to the right and get that lock So we are doing... There it is. All right. Lukash thinking on his feet right now. And taking the okay. boost. All right. So he's he wants to 100% make sure he doesn't get shot this turn. I would have liked the lock there to reinforce the offense when coming back in. But he's got time. Jan clearing stress. Will likely try for... I guess that already has a target lock. We... Going to double focus, charge up that Moldy Crow. Now, one thing we do got to remember, the Hawk has boost. So, I, I, I don't, be, don't be surprised if we see AP5 coordinating some boost actions coming up. Here's a rules question for you. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, the Jedi didn't boost and stayed there, um, and let's say that Jan shot with the, was obstructed through both the Cloud and the Asteroid, would that be uh, two dice for obstructed, or no? Just still one a one die bonus for the obstruction, and you just get the gas cloud ability. 
Just one. One with the gas cloud, yeah. Uh, the rules state, you know, like, up, is it obstructed? That's whether it's mm -hmm. between seven rocks or, or one. It's all, all the same. Makes sense. All right. So we see here Janor's banking to the right. And it looks like Janor's is going to be boosting. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Oh. Jan's boost is red, so if she were to do that, uh, what would her options after be? Well, she still actually has a ton of options because even with mm -hmm. that stress, AP5 can still coordinate. So you got you got that available as well. I'm just kind of surprised we didn't get the coordinated boost and then clearing of the stress with the maneuver. That way you end unstressed. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know it, it works either way. You're still you're still in the driver's seat. You're still up on points. Um, just the, having that stress out there does end up limiting some of the additional action economy. Though Jan is already carrying around two focuses. Uh, plus what AV, whatever AP5 wants to give her, and a target lock on the Jedi Knight. There's not much you need. <laughs> You're not really wanting for much outside of an evade token uh, coming mm -hmm. in from uh, from Jin Urso crew. Hard two from AP5. Coordinate. And that's again AP5's ability. Gonna make it a squiggle. Double focus evade. Uh, that's a defensive I like hawk. It. Yeah. It is, it is good. Three banking around. Lukash trying to find this pursuit angle to to get AP5, but expect uh, expect Jan to uh, to be ready. Now, one of the options that we could end up seeing Lukash doing, which maybe this is what he's setting up for, we've got a barrel roll to the outside. This should avoid range. Already boosted this turn, so not going to be able to do a double boost. If you can set up a turn where you end up purpose, where you end up blocking Jan, you block Jan and have shots on AP5. You could take AP5 out, not get shot by Jan, and then the do -si do between the two commences. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, really what you're trying to do is just half points Jan and then hope against hope that you can stay above half points. And I mean, Jan does have the rotate, which makes things difficult, especially with that lock. But, you know, that Jedi could win that do -si do still. I 100% agree because Jan with the rotate does not need to engage like a normal front arc ship, right? Like it's not, mm -hmm. it's not, it's not really pursuing. It's uh, kind of like more of a strafing action. Do you stop here with Jan? Mm. There's the barrel roll. See, he, he's setting up. That is a setup for a for a zoomy zoomy five straight focus action. One straight. So they're going to be trading shots here, potentially. There's the boost. Interesting. James wants to end this. He knows that if he can get that half point on the Jedi Knight, this becomes significantly a, a much harder task for uh for for lukash here is the three dice attack two hits and a crit guaranteed half points and hit crit goes through the light is dwindling on the jedi and it is a panicked pilot i think i think that that right oh, there geez. is game there's no way we can recover from a panic pilot there triple stressed i mean a uh, double stressed you you got to take out two ships you got two hole left that that crit right there really seals the deal. You need something crazy. Absolutely nuts right here. Triple crits. 
get past the shield, like you need you need something crazy. You got three hits. Okay. I mean that's that's good. You're gonna get a damage, but uh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. What I was gonna say before that like death shot from Jan is uh what's interesting about her positioning is uh she's she's gonna be strained next turn. Mm -hmm. And so that might have tempted uh, Lucas to not dash toward AP5 and do a hard turn in on Jan. Um, and like that might might have brought the Jedi closer, uh, making sure that Jan gets that range one. And, you know, especially with that lock, it uh, could have been deadly. But do you you have 19 minutes? Do you bug out again and uh, and clear that stress? I mean, you know, I. I could see him doing a two bank to the right. Hmm. I mean, I honestly, I think that you might want to just go at AP five right now. You might want to go at AP five uh, only only for the fact that Jan is currently stressed. She is about to lose her action because of the cloud. And this might be a chance to take out AP5, and then you have a couple turns to clear the stress. That might be outside of range two. No, just barely in. So this could give Jan the rotate that she needs to have a shot. I like going toward AP5, like you said, better. Um, because even if the Jedi does the two bank away, AP5 is still going to get the shot. Mm -hmm. um, there's a chance it could be obstructed, but at least this way you have a shot in return. All right, there's a coordinate for the evade. And a rotate to the right, so this probably means just a hard turn. And uh, making a Jedi Knight sandwich. Here's a five straight. Get in there, little Jedi. Dion, can you take another stress from Jan to do that rotate? Mm, I no, I don't. I don't believe so. You can you can co be coordinated. No, because action, that but, but you can be a red action. Right. Okay, I'm gonna let them know. We can double check. We should double check that with D, but I'm, I don't. I don't know if you can focus, rotate. My fault. That was a strain and not a stress. And so uh, she just because the rotate is red, right? Yeah, I mean he can he can do the the folk he can just do the rotate, but um, but yeah Wasn't you can't do stress before that though. Well, because of the AP 5s ability lets you lets you do actions while stressed, but you can't like do an action while stressed, but you cannot link to 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 red. So he he focused right. in order to do the to do the evade. Oh jeez, that Jedi did not get the shot that uh, that he wanted there. Nope, just a single hit. The strain came from the cloud, folks. AP five can be the hero of the rebellion here. And there it there it is. Beep boop beep boop. There's a crit. And it does Ooh. not get through. Oh. <laughs> that die. It was deciding up until the last second. Uh That was pretty gutsy uh to do the five straight because now you're still double stress. Um and so If I, maybe not. 
if the two bank to the right fit, which I don't think it does, that's what I'd do um, with the Jedi. But... With AP-5 having a front and a rear arc and backup maneuvers, I don't know... I don't know how you guarantee that you get a shot on AP-5 and AP doesn't get a uh, shot on you. That's I don't, difficult. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Uh, you're... you're hmm. You might... Jedi Knight could try to go for the tactical bump here to avoid the back arc and lose a stress by doing something like a two forward. Uh, but then you you That's do risk a bad idea. you do risk a, a rotate from Jan. All right, all right. So here we go. Step one, possible tactical bump. This takes away his stress. Uh, AP five did not coordinate, so no rotate on Jan loses the stress and the strain. But we'll get the rotate from Jan right here since she cleared it herself. So we'll have a shot, and you need you need that force to hold you up. And she still has that lock, too. So this mm -hmm. could be deadly. This would be a two on two. One, two. Roll them. Single crit. Remembers the target lock. Doubles. And let's this see what we got biter. here. That's a crit. All right, on a direct. Anything but the direct keeps this game going. It's a stunned pilot. After you fully execute, basically touch. If you touch the obstacles, is bad. But I, I think that honestly, in this situation, is best case scenario. Mm -hmm. For a second, I thought it was another panicked pilot, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> like that is brutal." <laughs> like, that probably would have been, aside from a direct, that would have probably been worst case scenario. I um, agree. All right, we're down to 1250, friends. 1250. Little Jedi that could? Question mark? Maybe? I don't know, but we've been, we've been uh, lucky enough to have this entertaining game. Starting off our top cut of the Tatooine Galactic Championship Qualifier. Update. Uh, Sammy uh, Petteri Uvinen, also known as Netter, has beat Eno. All right. We'll go ahead and update our bracket here so that we can show that off when the time is nigh. So Sammy gets and the dub. For those that are wondering, uh, Sammy is actually flying Vader in the Defender and two Foresight Inquisitors. But the real hero of that list is the Jamming Beam on Vader. I'm <laughs> sure that's come in handy a lot. You never know. Versus a Phantom, you never know. You never know. All right, Janor is getting aggressive now. Does take a strain here. Now, Lukash is still playing smart. Gave himself the opportunity to clear the stress by going in the corner. Likely not getting shot this turn. Here we go. Downtown shot from AP5. One crit. Does it have the calculate? Does not. Decided to... Uh, no damage there. Decided, I think, to take a lock. Uh, no. Also, the Jedi was at range... It doesn't matter, but the Jedi was at range 3, so I think he should have gotten a third die. Mm-hmm. I will say I don't like Jan's positioning right now. Unless you coordinate a boost to the right and then bank left. Um, that's not bad, but... All right, another got to take out AP5 and half Jan. Another report here on a completed game. Connor Holmes over Luke Thompson. 
Separatists beating out the resistance. Connor Holmes is flying Django Zam. The bo the boogeyman. Boogeyman list. All right. Jedi Knight coming around. Barrel rolling to the outside. And right now, you know, t talking about Jan's positioning, really, Jan just got to play defense. That That's the thing. Like, she doesn't have to play offense right now. You keep her safe. Keep her safe and you win the game. Because even if you take mm -hmm. out AP5, you're, you're ahead, especially with that two-hole on the Jedi Knight. That's true. This Jedi can also chase her down if if uh, if James like does just straight up run with Jan and he separates Jan and AP5. Uh, that Jedi can make quick work of AP5 um, and then come for Jan. So uh, I think it's it might be smart for James to bank left with AP5 and still keep them relatively close together. All right, two birds of a feather fly together. Is that how that saying goes? I don't know. <laughs> but AP... Two, well, two birds ahead. of a feather flock together. I think flock. But flock. Fly, fly works. It's more X-Wing appropriate. Right? Uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Somebody starts calling their, their squadrons flocks. It's my flock of X-Wings. My flock of hawks. Right? Hey, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Barrel rolling to the left, trying to see if you can get a shot on AP5. Clicking on the wrong spot, my friend. There we go. As forward go. as possible. Might have a shot on AP5, just barely. And there, there's the separation you were talking about there, Jonah. There's a little, there's a, a little bit more space than than AP5 might be comfortable with between uh, Jan and AP5, though that could be a bait tactic as well. So, hey, look at this AP5. Everything's fine. Just go ahead and take it. And then you end up flanked. That Jedi really wants a three hard right now. Um, he didn't check also, it. He didn't check his arc? Why did he? I, it's overhead. I think it's pretty far out. Um, All righty. I'm just kind of surprised you don't check it for, for just distance information. That's true. That's a good point. I think you got to take the calculate. Yeah. Flying five straight, recognizing the, uh, the possibility of, of Jan swooping in. Five straight is the, is the way that you're going to be covering the most amount of ground. That moment where you wish it was an 8 to 2. That way he can boost before uh -huh. the five straight. That Jedi's only got six and a half minutes. You gotta make a move toward AP5 and try to hide behind that cloud for cover. I think AP5 is doing another three bank to the left, though. He's gonna try to get as far away as possible. We have some folks asking for the bracket, some of the players. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. Upload our current status of the bracket. There it is, the boost and taking a focus. All right, this could be the end of AP5. Jan Orr's coming around. Cloud protection for the Jedi. This is a chance right here. Lucas has put himself in a position where he may be able to meet his wing condition or at least take a step closer to it. And you got to start getting shots in here soon. 
in five minutes. All right, here we go through the cloud. So we two on four. Okay. Jen needs to save that blank out for when uh, it actually matters <laughs> for Lucas to have a chance here. Two hits. From the Jedi, looking at AP5. AP5 is going to get three dice. Has a calculate. Safe. Oh. Another game to report here. Fawn Langalan wins 200 to 46 versus Sven Punga, a.k.a. Uh, High Gruff. Two on three. AP5. Beep boop for two. Oh, boy. Takes okay. <laughs> nothing there. The focus able to be converted all right uh, and uh i believe i'll check um yeah fawn is flying um hmps and grievous and he just beat out sven who's flying Django zam so uh one of the boogeymen is uh is gone so <laughs> Is that a boogeyman sound? I don't know. I think that sounded more like a ghost. <laughs> it was like a mix between a ghost and the noise that the fire spray makes. You know, like the... Like the... Yeah. That was perfect. <laughs> we, we aim to entertain here at GSP. So as long as at least a couple people, uh, you know, giggled at home. Uh, then that's good. Oh, another another game to report here. Totem wins his game versus Lockie, two hundred to one seventy six. A tight one there. Totem is flying uh, two Gene Ocean prototype HMPs, O six six, and the Sith Infiltrator with Grievous and Probe Droids and Scimitar and Intimidation, um, and then. Finishing it off with a tri fighter uh, with fire control. Jedi zooming uh, in. Yes. Might be a kill shot. Jan says, "I don't care about no cloud. Look at my, look at all my mods. Give me the strain. I eat strain for breakfast." At this point, with like you know, only a few minutes on the clock. He wants that total destruction. Here's the roll. That's going to be three. Guaranteed another damage. He's gone. The Jedi Knight gives up the ghost. Congratulations, James. Getting himself past the top 16 and into the top 8. Watch out. Dash is on a rampage, friends. Thank you to Iso, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, and Row 6. Our Grand Admiral patrons and all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members. Thank you so much for your support. Gold. Squadron out.